Uh, no. And today we get used to stars and these and these soapies going into the music industry, but really E Street for you mm. set the trend, didn't it? It was the first to do it. Mm. You had two huge hits. Yeah. How did all that come about? Um, basically, Forrest just asked me to come up to his office one day and said. Um, how would you feel about releasing a single? And I thought, yeah, that sounds like fun. And the next minute I was on set, you know, shooting mm. a film clip. So it that just was, happened. That was bizarre. Happened really, really yeah. quickly. It was very music um, oriented, wasn't it? it the was whole that, yeah, yeah, the backing the tracks show. and everything. Did you do a song too, Bruce? Yeah. I, I did, yes. Bruce, that was a huge hit, wasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, look at <laughs> What it, was um, it called again? Uh, it was called One of a Kind, and that's right. exactly what it was, Bushy. <laughs> okay, never to be one again, I can tell you. Okay, so, yeah. And when you two weren't singing, you were kissing. Uh, yes. Well, oh. yeah. We yeah, there was, kissing, there was a lot of that going on. The first kiss between you guys. You're not going to show us it. Please don't. Yep. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> Just run nervous. us through it. Were you nervous at the time? I was petrified. I was oh. absolutely petrified. Oh really? dear. Why? Bruce? It, it was, Why? It was, it was, it, you had to kiss Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, I, it was it was very awkward at the time because you know uh, Melissa was was very shy. She was she was a schoolgirl. She was a baby. I've never kissed a boy and, before. And you know, and we're, Bruce. we're being told to do these That's things. How and, she, yeah. yeah. I was just as uncomfortable as Melissa was. I can tell yeah. you that. And, well, you'd never kissed a girl. Oh no, I'd, I'd kissed, kissed plenty at that time, but I hadn't I hadn't but kissed sixteen. Melissa, years. you hadn't I kissed a boy. I was <laughs> very young and girl yeah. next door, and then all of a sudden I'm wearing tight clothes and leather jackets, and I'm kissing. You know, and it was growing up in the public eye. You know, on a yeah. very popular show. Bruce, you. Yeah. you Provided the comic relief, Constable Max. Yes. Let's let's take a look at your first appearance. Have you got a mother? Why? I'd like to phone her to come and collect you. You're obviously not as old as you look. Nineteen. Right. I'm a cop. Right. I'm going to work here. I think I better phone a doctor instead. <laughs> And that was your first scene? That was my very, very first scene. It was a little bit like Marcus, you know, straight out of drama school, and then the journey began from there. It's and surreal. But it's yeah, a huge journey, yeah, because so. in 1992 you won a silver Logie, and, and the fame was enormous. What was that like, coping with it all? Oh, look, it was, it was, it was very daunting at first, but at the same token it was a lot of fun. I was, I was young and I uh, had a lot of energy, and uh, these things just kept coming at me at 100 mile an hour, and I think they kept coming at a lot of us. Most right? of you really haven't changed all that much, but our next guest, uh, probably has the most, one could say. You might have known her as a cute Claire Fielding. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ghost. Ghost who? Ghost to show you there's no such thing. There is. Oh, wasn't she cute? All the way from Los Angeles, please welcome Brooke Mikey Anderson. <laughs> You were seven years yeah, of age. Did you look up to these guys? Oh, totally. I mean, you know, literally too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Weird, so, you're like a completely different person. I know. I was like, guys, stand yeah. up. I yeah. look you in the eye. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, particularly because we had some great scenes together and a whole lot of the teenagers used to be really envious of my scenes with you and I never understood why. Uh, I figured it was oh, good. Yeah. Oh, Obviously I worked it out seven. now. Yeah. But now, yeah, I was getting to, is there a Harley out the back? Because I'll so totally come for a ride now. Yeah. <laughs> was that the line, was it? Oh. Yes. And Bring we it. saw you on Lost just recently. Yeah, well, there you go. Yes. Yeah. That was cool. Tell us about the role. Um, Lost was great. I got to shoot in Hawaii for 12 days and um, I was only working two. It was a small role, but a cool role. You're based in Hollywood full time now yeah, in LA. Pretty is much it, living is it there. Good? It is. It's good. You know, I've been focusing on writing, producing, and directing, so I'm producing a film at the moment. Um, but still acting. Right. Can't want to look at these guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll have to let you catch up afterwards. Now that we were talking about the werewolf and all the different roles, and the thing with E Street was it often pushed the boundaries of belief. But there was one character who really took the cape. Now he was the nice guy karate instructor who had a dangerous split <laughs> personality. It's all right, Stephen. There's nothing to be frightened of. We're not going to hurt you. All we want to do is have a chat. Come on now. Come with us. Mummy. It's all right. Your mummy wants you to come with us. She wants you to be a good boy. Mummy wants you to tell us everything. Don't you? Don't you, mummy? Oh. Please welcome Brooke Mikey Anderson. Thank you. 
please welcome live via satellite from New York City, Mr. Bird, otherwise known as Vince Martin. Good morning, Australia. Yeah. Good morning, Australia. <laughs> Look, now, Vince, tell us, you've, you've been living in New York for, for quite a while, but take us back to your East Street days. What was it like being the baddie? Well, the bad roles are always the best roles to play, I guess, uh, but this was certainly a, um, a bad role. The thing about me doing E Street, I only did it for eight weeks. And um, then the, I, I had my head blown off or something, or my face blown off, and they, then I employed another actor and put a bag over his head, and the whole thing continued on without me. <laughs> I've got to ask you one story in particular, though. I understand you had a bit of an experience uh, driving home one night after filming, playing Mr. Bad, and you stopped at a petrol station. We finished late, so I'm putting petrol in my car, and I noticed other people just staring at me, and I think, oh, well, I guess they know me from the show, but then I thought, no, they're really, really staring at me. <laughs> and I saw my reflection in the window, and I still had my black and silver paint on. <laughs> so there was Mr. Bad, calmly, in the evening, putting gas in his car, hey, what's up? Yeah. There you go, with the black and silver paint on. <laughs> It's great to see you all, and, and, and speaking of that, um, we've got to give a clue for our mystery guest. If you just Could you maybe pass those yeah, along, if yeah, you'd like yeah. to help us with the, uh, yeah. with the first clue. Yeah. Now, if, you, you. if you'd like to... Fresh smelling gum leaves. Give, give us a go in Make terms tea. of... Yeah, whistling. Oh, whistling. Mm. Whistling. The whistle. Come on, you guys. Well, give it a go. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> You've acted with mutes. You've played serial Werewolf. psycho killers. I can do it, I can do it, I know. Go, 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 go. Oh, you've got oh. Hey, okay. It's really hang hard on. to do. Hang on, hang on. Oh. Here, here we go, here we go. Follow me. Ready? One, two, three.